The CPI numbers for July 2023 are out with inflation being a tad bit higher when compared to June of 2023. We may have saved ourselves from a full-blown recession with the job market hanging strong, but the housing market once again is very disproportionate. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you what is happening around us, why this housing market is so wacky, and what all of us should be focusing on to have an upper hand. So let's get started. Inflation numbers are out for July of 2023 and inflation is at 3.2% compared to 3% in June 2023. Now, if we looked at this report a little deeper, we could see that energy costs are lower and so are used car prices, which contributed to the big inflation numbers that we saw during the pandemic when there's an influx of cash in the market. Now, these numbers are down and the largest contributor to this inflation number is shelter, which consists of rents and houses. And if you are in whatever local market you are, you know where those prices are right now. Credit card debt has exceeded $1 trillion with with interest rates at a 30 year high, indicating that Americans may be over leveraged and living paycheck to paycheck. Also, claims for unemployment were a tad bit higher, pointing out that there may have been some more job losses, which something the Federal Reserve has been focused on to bring down spending in this country. Is all of this good news or bad news? Well, if you take out shelter out of the inflation number, inflation has significantly dropped in the last 12 months, which is great news for the economy and what the Federal Reserve has really been focused on is bringing the inflation number down. Now, credit card debt may sound very alarming to all of us, but we Americans are known to really use our credit cards and live on borrowed money. It's a, it's a very common theme here in the US. And if you all know, and I believe you all really know this, that everything was really expensive during the pandemic time. And that's when spending was very high. And it definitely makes sense to have that debt close to a trillion dollars where it was already touching the trillion mark before that. So high prices caused this debt to be at where it's at. Now, when we read these kind of reports, it gives us a lot of, there's a lot of mixed data out there and there's fear mongering and a lot of negative news out there. But sometimes these reports just tell us what's on the surface level because if you looked at the delinquency report, we're at a record low right now which kind of indicates that borrowers are making payments on their credit cards, well, at least their minimum payments. The unemployment claims number was a tad bit higher than the week prior. These numbers are shown on a weekly basis, and I don't think it's worth quantifying here on the board because it's a very marginal number, and the job market is still hanging very strong. If you're in the market right now looking for a home and wanna get an idea what the rates look like, watch this video up top. If you're getting real value out of this content, Hit that like button to get more videos like this and hit that subscribe button to stay on top of your real estate game. Thank you for watching. Now moving to our second point, why is this housing market so wacky? Well, first and foremost, most people or the average person in this country is priced out of the market with home prices being very high and rates also being really, really sky high. But the real culprit is not the interest rate, but the low inventory. This is a market that we have never seen before where inventory is disproportionately lower than the demand. Yes, you can say that the rates have directly impacted this and people, sellers especially, are not someone that has to sell. Like, uh, may that be if you're going through a divorce or if you're an investor that's doing a 1031 exchange or you have to sell. Someone that does not have to sell is not selling right now because of the rates being high and this is causing a really competitive environment and causing the home prices to even rise a little higher in some markets or just sit there and causing a very unhealthy market causing a lot of competition out there where there's five buyers but only one home so let's look at some local data here in the city of Fremont in the East Bay area to make some conclusions and see what the inventory looks like and this is a detached single-family home report for the month of July 
of 2023. So if you can see here that July 23 this year, active listings were 45, meaning that the homes that were listed on the market were only 45 homes compared to a July 2022 last year where acting listings are at 179, almost 130 some homes less. That is huge, guys. That's like 130 homes that people are not out there looking at. Days on market, as you can see, is still pretty alarming that even with the rates high, homes are still selling two days less compared to days on market last year. It was at 14, we're at 12. And look at this number, the monthly supply. Last year, around this time, you know, people had kind of slowed down. They were thinking the rates are coming up and people were really on the fence and monthly supply kind of went up and we were almost touching the two month mark in July. But now if you look at it, we don't even have one month of supply, one month of inventory to meet the demand. What you saw there on that report is very astonishing. And this is something new that a lot of us have not really experienced with the inventory is this low. So for us to get to a more healthier market, we're gonna need a huge amount, a surplus of inventory to come into the market. And I believe maybe the lower interest rates, if we get to a healthier, say five and a half, five percent may cause more sellers to bring their homes on the market, but what else is that gonna do? That's gonna bring more buyers that are now priced out back into the market. So that's gonna create that frenzy again that we saw during the pandemic time. So it's really interesting where we are right here because if rates come down, those buyers come back, prices still hang strong, or if, if the demand is still high and inventory is not able to meet the demand, prices may even go higher. So we're kinda in this very kind of limbo stage. It's gonna be very interesting to see what happens next. Can we all agree that uncertainty will always be there and no one can accurately predict the market. We saw this recently during the pandemic when in early 2023 shit hit the fan, excuse my language, and people in March and April really put their home search on the back burner, but people that stuck it out and believed that the numbers made sense for them locked in amazing low rates and made significant equity in just a year, year and a half. And if you go a little bit further back, say, let's talk about the 08 crash, which was the most recent crash that we've seen. We saw that the folks that held on to their properties didn't foreclose, didn't buy into the herd mentality that let homes go, no one knows what's gonna happen. They were able to retain their properties, save them from foreclosing and save their credit and built equity and investors that were in that market that had money and bought properties, rental properties, made significant equity and significant profits from them. Folks that showed success in these markets exhibited three qualities. Number one, they practiced patience and didn't panic. Number two, they bought properties for the long haul. They thought of this as a long time game and put that into their plan. Number three, they had money saved and had reserves to take action when the time was right. So my advice to you is to cut out all the noise, run your numbers with your loan officer, talk to your real estate professional and see how those numbers feel on your wallet, on your pocket, because I will never advise you to buy if it doesn't feel good on your wallet. But predicting the market is a loser's game. So go out there, get busy. That's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, and if you got real value out of this video, please leave me a comment below. This is Karan Singh, until next time.